Hi, I'm Pete Sharman, a product manager with the Enterprise Manager team. In this tutorial I'll show you how to use Exadata Sparse Clone to create a thin clone of a pluggable database, as well as a thin clone of a non-pluggable database running in an Exadata environment. In earlier releases of the Enterprise Manager product, we introduced Snap Clone functionality with engineered systems such as Exadata. Snap Clone is a way of taking advantage of copy and write technology to produce a thin clone of a database allowing cloning of an existing database in a way that takes only a very small subset of the amount of storage used by the existing database. In earlier releases, SnapClone on engineered systems used external storage, such as the Oracle ZFS storage appliance or NetApp Viler, to store the data file artifacts on the clone. The downside of using these external storage systems is they are not Exadata or aware, and cannot take advantage of a lot of the unique innovations that Xdata has brought to the table as you see on the right hand side here such as smart scan and hybrid columnar compression. Now with Xdata sparse clone you can create fast space efficient snapshot databases in two simple steps. Firstly you create a sparse disk group on your Xdata storage and then you either create a snapshot database or a snapshot pluggable database that reads data from a read-only test master database and writes to the sparse disk group. Depending on the environment you are building, the Exadata snapshots are initiated either by a snapshot copy for pluggable databases or a clone DB operation for non-contained databases. The test master database must be in read-only mode. Because we are using a disk group on the Exadata storage, all the Exadata features work as expected on the snapshot databases. Diagrammatically you can picture this as shown. On the left hand side of the picture we have our production database. We use DataGuard or an ARM and clone operation to take a full copy of the production database to our test or development environment. The test master is read only. The snapshots are made up of sparse files composed only of change blocks. Other data is read from the test master. Now we understand the concepts behind Exadata Sparse Clone, let's have a look at it in action. Firstly, we'll look at using it to clone a pluggable database, and then we'll look at using it to clone a non-container database. Here you can see my Exadata machine that I'm going to be using for this example. Let's expand the list of databases here on the left. You can see there are several databases already on this machine, and I'm going to be using this Prod Exa database as the database that uh, I'm going to clone from. If I click on that database, you can see this is a container database. From the container database homepage, I can use the container switcher next to the container database name to select the pluggable database I want to go to. This is the homepage for the ABC Prod PDB1 pluggable database. If I look at the storage for this database, I can see that the table spaces for this database have a total allocated size of just over 560 gigabytes. The data files for this database are on the data C1 disk group. I can validate that by looking at the data files. And here you can see that all the data files are indeed sitting on an ASM disk group. The first step we need to take in this environment is to create the test master. For sparse clone we need to clone from a database in read only mode which is why we are creating a test master of this production database. I'm going to start from the database homepage for the ABC Prod PDB1 database. From here, all I need to do to create a test master is to follow the path Oracle Database Cloning Create Test Master. On the first step of the wizard, I need to provide some source and destination information. Firstly, I need to provide some source credentials. Since I have preferred credentials set up in this environment, I can just leave that as is. On the destination side, I need to provide a meaningful name for the database, and I need to provide a display name. I also need to provide the PDB administrator credentials. Notice here I can also specify the container database, so I can actually switch this to another database if I want to, but in the example I'm using here, I'll click on this selector and just select the same container database as the pluggable database is currently in. I 
I need to provide some credentials for that. Again, I have the preferred credentials set for the database, but I'll provide the ASM credentials by clicking on the Select Credentials button. And then I'll move to the next screen. On the configuration step of the wizard, I need to specify the ASM disk group I'll be using if it's different to the Data C1 disk group that I'd already created. In this case, I'm leaving that as it is, and I don't need to change that. For a sparse clone test master, you also need to set the access control list. If a user other than the one that I'm creating this test master as needs to create sparse clones from this test master, that user will need to have access to the data files. In the example I'm showing here, as long as the user is part of the operating system group DBA, they'll be able to create sparse clones. The next step allows me to do some post-processing. So here I can set up a masking definition and also select custom scripts from the software library to customize the test master. Again, I'll leave these fields alone and move on to the next screen. On the schedule screen, I can change the name of this deployment procedure instance into something a little bit more recognizable. I can also change the schedule for this create test master database. It defaults to immediately, but if I wanted to just move that to later. Finally, I get a review screen where I can see everything I've uh, added and I can click the clone button to perform the cloning itself. On the procedure activity screen, I can minimize the region for the elapsed time so I can see a little bit more when I do a view expand all. I also tend to change the procedure refresh period to every 30 seconds so I can actually see things taking place. That'll take some time to finish so I'll pause the video here and start it again once that's actually taken place. As expected that took some time to complete since the database was around 560 gigabytes in size. So let's go now and have a look at this uh, target and see what we've created. Here you can see the test master database we just created sitting within the same container base as the original. Let's drill into the cloning menu for this test master database. You'll see that since we already know this is a test master database, that the options here have changed from what we saw earlier. And now we can create a snapshot clone from the test master database. On the create snapshot clone pluggable database page, the preferred credentials are again already set for me. On the destination side of the page, I can provide a meaningful name for the pluggable database and a display name. So let me just change the display name for now. I also need to provide a password for the PDB administrator. Notice here I have the option to clone the pluggable database into a different container database. I'm cloning this pluggable database into the same container database as production, so I'll leave this unchecked. I also need to provide the ASM credentials. The test master and the clone need to be within a single ASM installation, so the ASM cluster has to be the same. The page we're looking at actually has two flavors. One is the simple interface we just looked at. We can click the clone button to clone this environment. We can also click on the advanced button to walk through a more advanced configuration. If we do that, you can see on the second screen that we can change the sparse disk group here. And we also have the ability to change other PDB level options. The good thing about this wizard is from any step, such as where I am now, if you're satisfied with all the inputs, you can immediately click clone rather than stepping through the remaining steps of the wizard. Now I can watch the cloning process. Again, I'll do an expand all on this so we can see all the procedure steps. So what we're doing now is creating a snapshot clone of the test master database, which as you re might recall is around 560, 570 gigabytes in size. I can just refresh the screen a couple of times here, and you can see the process completes very quickly. In fact, it's only taken about five seconds to prepare the SQL for creating the clone, and you can see the uh, SQL here. What we're actually doing is, as you'd expect, creating a pluggable database uh, from the test master. We specified the sparse disk group, and we've got the snapshot copy option on the command here. The actual execution of the script only takes around 11 seconds. 
In this screen watch you've seen how easy it is to create Exadata Smart Clone snapshot databases using both a pluggable database and a non-container rack database as the source. I'm Pete Sharman, thanks so much for watching.